Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 52 of A VO's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika, and this show is all about helping you become a full-time voiceover artist by growing your business and learning from all of my mistakes so that you don't have to make them and you can uh, you know, grow without the fear of tripping over yourself like I'm doing. But, but... I am getting better, and hopefully you can too. I'm really excited about tonight because I want to talk about something I'm seeing a lot about uh, in chats and in forums and on the fa- in the Facebook groups, and that is ACX. Tonight I want to talk about is it better to charge royalty share or per finished hour rate, and what is that rate you should be charging, and is it too low? Is there a too low of a rate where you just say, no, forget it? All right, we're going to talk about it. All right, let's do it. This is VO's Journey. With your host, the incomparable Anthony Pika. All right, so... Tonight, we're going to be talking about ACX. Oh, ACX, Audible, you have created this monster. But the positive thing about ACX is it gives us an opportunity to really get ourselves out there without having to worry about having demos and having all kinds of a structured business. It gets us voiceover artists who are just starting an opportunity to move past that opening awkwardness uh, when we start. And, uh, you know, when I first started doing voiceover a couple years ago, that's exactly where I started. And I started with a bunch of equipment, you know, as you all know, that wasn't the best equipment. And that's okay. Uh, But, you know, as I went along and I got more work off of ACX and then off of other platforms, I was able to purchase better equipment and better equipment until I have what I have now, which is pretty much where I want to be. And I assume one day, you know, because I'm like an equipment junkie that I'm going to want to buy some more. But anyways, tonight I'm going to talk about pricing yourself on ACX. Also, is royalty share worth it? You know, I've been seeing a lot of people ask the question about it. And the reason being is because it's very exciting. I'm seeing a lot of people auditioning on ACX, doing the things they need to be doing to win uh, auditions. And you know what? It's working. I'm seeing a lot of people uh, winning those auditions. And then they're getting the information back from the author. And they don't know exactly what to say to the author. Like if the author offers them... Uh, you know, fifty dollars per finished hour. You know, well, I mean, that's you know, that's that's low. I mean, the thing with Amazon and 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 Audible, okay, and ACX, is ACX, you know, started its own its own price structure. Okay, so many of us know that you know there is uh, the GVAA or the Global Voice Acting Academy that that publishes a rate guide, and in this rate guide, it gives industry standard rates. Well, you know, Amazon, as they do, and ACX said, you know what, you know, you can publish whatever you want. We're going to publish our own stuff because who are you going to do? You're going to stop me, right? Because we'll put out so much because we're, we're the largest audiobook dealer. We'll put out this stuff and we'll see what happens. And they did. And so, of course, all of these authors are there. So, of course, we're going to go there as well. Now, as first, before we get into this, as always, I want to say that I am a big proponent for you doing your own thing and you making your own business decisions and not let anyone make your business decisions for you, okay? But at the same time, I want you to think strategically as a business owner and I want you to think about some different ways of pricing yourself and offering the owner or the author of the book or the publisher, whoever's whoever's dealing with the, the rights at that moment, the rights holder, I want you to think about different ways to you know structure what you're doing so that maybe you can make some more money. And I'm going to tell you some of those things tonight. So on ACX, if you don't know, there is a, a price structure. And the price structure goes in increments of 0 to 50. 
and then it goes from uh, 50 to 100, and then 100 to 200, and then 200 to 400, and then 400 to 1,000. Those are the increments, and within those increments, authors go in there and they put down what they want to sell their book as. Also in there is royalty share. Okay, now the royalty share is on one side and then all of the paid outright per finished hours on the other side. If you do royalty share, then you are going to get seven years, all right, seven years of royalties every time a book is, an audio book is sold. And you also qualify for the bounty program, meaning that anytime someone goes on and purchases a, an audible uh, subscription, and then uses their credit, their first credit to purchase an audiobook, your audiobook, Amazon automatically pays you $50. Now you split that with the author, so you get $25 and they get $25. But what I wanna point out to you is this. If you do a book, let's say you do a book, I just saw someone tonight talking about it, I was so proud of her, but she got a, a book deal, I can't remember, it was somewhere between five or 10,000 words, and the author was offering $50 per finished hour. And at 5,000 words, you know, that's $25, okay? So at $25, she would make for about, you know, an hour and a half to two hours work, okay? Uh, starting out, I know for me, I did that. I did that because I wanted to make money. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just thrilled that someone offered me a, an audio book and I wasn't doing anything else. So of course, I just started doing books at whatever price I could because that's what I knew, okay? But as I've, I've been in the industry a little bit longer now and I've seen things and I've you know charged more and, and see where I go, you know, I have some different opinions about it. So let's, let's talk about, let's break this down. So let's say an author, you know, offers to pay you $50 per finished hour. And as you look at the deal, you realize, okay, so if I was to do this, I would make $25 and it would take me about two hours. Okay. So at two hours to turn that in, uh, and by the way, that's if, that is if you turn in your files and they are pristine and perfect and Audible accepts them. I'm not saying, or ACX accepts them. I'm not saying that you won't do that. But I know when I first started, that wasn't as easy as it seems now to me. Uh, it was kind of hard because I, I didn't have all my dials, all my settings correct. So sometimes they would kick it back and I had to figure out what was going on, you know? So anyways, um, what happened was is you break that down and it's like $12.50 or something. So you're doing like $12.50 for, you know, for two hours or for an hour of work. So that's a little bit more than minimum wage, right? Um, and, you know, but, but it's important to note there that someone is still paying you to work as a voice actor. And that is an important distinction to make. And you can never forget that. But I think we can do a little bit better and we can tailor our conversation to the rights holder in a way in which we can get them to see uh, maybe a silver lining or a path they weren't thinking. So let's take a look at royalty share in this situation. If we are doing royalty share, okay, uh, and let's say over the seven years that you have it, someone, anyone over the millions upon hundreds of millions, the billions of people that will go through Amazon, all right, and possibly look at your book or have you know some sort of you know touch on that book that audiobook if any if one of those people purchases that book that audiobook with their free credit and you get $25 you will also get extra money for them purchasing the book as well so right then and there you have made more money than you made by just doing it for $25 that's at seven years, one person purchasing the book that way, all right? Now listen, I think if you think of it that way, it's imp you know, you, you're like, oh man, wow, I mean, that's, it's crazy not to do royalty share in that situation. But let's back up and look at it a different way. If I was going to do a book that was 80,000 words, all right, and in 80,000 words, okay, a ACX says that 9,300 words equals a finished hour. I believe them, 
okay? It really does. However, I have moved on to 10,000 words, although I, I am seriously thinking about moving that back down. But I use 10,000 words because 10,000 words is an easy way for myself and the rights holder to quickly go through the math in their head, whereas 9,300 takes a little bit more, you know, 9,300 words takes a little bit more math on the part, you know, of, of, of both of us when trying to figure out a price and so forth. So, you know, when I'm taking that number, all right, $10,000 or 10,000 words and up to 80,000, so that is eight finished hours. When actuality, it's probably more around nine, nine and a half finished hours. So let's do that. So let's say it's nine, nine hours. Let's just say nine finished hours. Rule of thumb when you're first starting out, especially, is it usually takes around three hours per finished hour, and that's if, that's if you are pretty decent. Okay, I personally shoot always for less than two hours max per finished hour, so that I am not going like I'm not losing money for my time but when I first started out it was I mean I thought something was wrong with me because I was doing like four hours five hours and I thought gosh I I must really suck at this and you know what maybe I did (laughs) maybe I did really suck but I didn't know you know what I could do shortcuts I could take and honestly the, the the honest truth is before you get your space and everything dialed in completely the way it needs to be it's going to be harder for you to actually get um, actually get your audio to a place where it doesn't take you forever and a day to fix it. And I, I learned that uh, at the hard way. But anyways, it doesn't matter. You can still do it. So let's just say, though, that it takes you three hours. We'll use uh, three hours. So three times nine, all right, is 27 hours. So at 27 hours... Okay, at let's say they offer you $50. Okay, let's say they offer you the $50 per finished hour. Okay, so that's nine times 50 is $450, I believe, right? Yeah, so $450 for 27 hours. So if you do, if you divide that out, right? So 450 divided by, uh, I know divided by 10 is going to be what? 450 divided by 10 is $45. All right, and if you if you divide that by 20, it's going to be half of that, so it's going to be like 22 dollars and fifty cents, and then so you are going to be making a little bit more, but you're going to be making around the same amount, maybe around like 15 bucks an hour, okay, 15 bucks an hour, uh, which is not bad. Again, you're still making I me mean, 450 dollars is a lot of money. 27 hours is a lot of time to work though too, okay. But here's the deal. If you look at the royalty share aspect of it, okay, you get seven years, but if someone goes to buy your book, they're going to have to do, they're going to have to buy, you're going to have to sell a lot more books in order to get to that mark of at least $450, okay? So royalty share in that case may not be the best thing to do if, and this is a big if, if the book is not like selling like gangbusters, you know, like it's not selling like crazy and it's not, you know, within under the first, like within the hundred, the first hundred on sales on Amazon, that's been proven over time, not within the Kindle program. I I talked a little bit on another episode about, you know, to, to watch out when you're going into book deals for royalty share and you see a book selling super well, like it's ridiculously, like it's like 13 in Amazon. And you're like, holy crap, I won this book. It's 13 in Amazon, royalty share. I'm going to make so much money. And then you sign on. And then when you go back and look uh, three days later, it's like 30, 40,000. And then you go back and it's 200,000. And you're like, what the heck happened? How did the book drop so fast? You go and look and there's no bad reviews. Okay. In fact, there's really no reviews at all. There's maybe one or two reviews. And you're like, I, I don't understand. Well, what happened was is that ACX or Audible offers programs or the Kindle program offers authors, self-publishers, the ability to publish their books and charge nothing for it. And Amazon will actually pay you. Audible will pay you. Okay, when I say Amazon, Audible, ACX, they're all owned by the same. They're all owned by Amazon. So I'm just in using it interchangeably, but I don't want to confuse anybody. But they will pay the author 
based on how many downloads that author gets from their book. Okay, so the it, it gives the author a great way to get their book in front of a lot of people for free. They get to get a lot of um, reviews, hopefully, which will help their book. And if the book does well and people like it, it will continue to do well. But what happens is it artificially inflates the book sales. So when that period of time is over, because they don't do it forever, right? Because they're not going to make as much as they would if the book was selling off of that. Like if the book was actually selling, being charged, you know, it's going to drop in the ranking severely. So that is really something to think about. And you have to look and and a way to tell that uh, you can never be completely sure, but you can. If, if, um, If it's on Kindle Unlimited and it's free, Okay, you know that they are doing the, the program, the Kindle Unlimited program, where they're offering it for free. Or it's, it doesn't cost any money if, it, if Amazon says, hey, sign up for Kindle Unlimited and you'll get this for free, and they just publish the book. If they just published it, okay, most likely they've put it into that program. So it's important to look at it that way uh, when, you're, you know, when you're thinking about whether a book is worth doing royalty share. But in my particular, in this particular example, I'm going to say it's probably not the best idea to do a book that is 80,000 words as a royalty share project if you are trying to, you know, make that amount of money you would make as the $450. Because let's be honest, the reason why you want to do a royalty share is because you feel you are going to make more money over time than you would if you got it paid up front. But if you figure that you're not going to make more money over time and you could make more money up front, then by all means, take the upfront job. Don't do the royalty share. That's why I always say if you're going to do a royalty share, do a royalty share that's under an, a per finished hour, one per finished hour. Because that amount of time, the likelihood that you'll make it back to me is a risk worth taking because for an hour and a half of my time or two hours of my time, seven years, I should be able to make that back. Hopefully. I mean, if the book only sells a couple and I just get back to, you know, what I would make, you know, for me, like if I charge $250 per finished hour, okay, you know, I would need to sell some. But the likelihood over a year, over seven years that I'm going to do that is pretty high and I can say that because I have a bunch of books that I do I have royalty shares still and I have about five years five and a half years left on them and every month I sell I sell some and and I still I'm still selling about six to seven royal um six to seven bounties every month so right there that's an extra hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars plus all of the book sales all the audiobook sales that I get on top of that do you know what I mean? So four, five, six hundred dollars a month, it's not bad continually over a period of time. All right. So, you know, that, but I have a lot. So, you know, that's, but again, that was for like a couple hours of my time a year and a half ago. Probably at the time, I, at the time, I was just happy to be doing an audiobook. I was just happy to get a deal. You know, now though, I think my lucky star is I did it because not only did I get the experience, but I'm being paid. I'm still being paid for it. So, you know, that's something that I I really want you to think about. The amount of time, if you feel after you do the numbers that you are going to make more money now than you are over time, based off of how long the book is, by all means, take the deal now. If you feel like you can make more money in the long run, take the royalty share. And don't be afraid to contact, there's a little section when you are offered a book by the rights holder that it says contact the rights holder before you say okay you know before you do it if you contact the rights holder and they contact you back you know let them know contact them and say hey i was thinking i might this might not be uh i i was looking at this and you know thank you so much for awarding me this book i was wondering if you'd be interested in maybe something like a royalty share because i think i could really help push the book and you know, it would be uh, not any money up front for you, and it would also, you know, really uh, get a, another person on your side that wants to sell audiobooks. Because the more we sell, the more money I make, and it's for seven years, and then you get the rights, all the rights back, anyways. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing to do. All right, if it makes sense financially. 
Okay. Now, if the author doesn't get back to you, and I've dealt with many authors who I don't know if they just, you know, they're, it's some company or it's, you know, somebody running tons of books. Because if you, you do a you do ACX long enough, you'll notice, especially the shorter books, that there are companies out there, are people who are just pushing books to try to make, you know, try to make money and the books are, you know, they're okay. I mean, they have information, but they're not high quality <laughs> books. If you know what I'm talking about, if you start looking at some of these, okay? Um, so, but some of them are, and, and that's fine. What I'm getting at is that if they don't get back to you, there isn't a lot of amount of time, in which case you have to make a decision. All right. And if they don't get back to you, you have to either accept it or not. I've done both. I've accepted them and not accepted them because the author has not gotten back to me. A lot of times they will, but a lot of times they might not. So just have, what I'm getting at is just have a plan for all of that to, in your mind. Say, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try it out. If they don't get back to me by this time, I'm either A, going to accept it or B, I'm going to decline it. All right. So let's move on to up the chain. Okay. You can do this for either any of them. You can do this for a hundred or you can do this from 50 to a hundred 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 1,000. 99.9%, you won't find a lot of books for 400 to $1,000 on ACX. And if you do, people have put them on there just to self-publish it, and they already have the um, they already have the narrator chosen. And they'll write down in the bottom, I've already chosen a narrator. Please do not submit auditions for this. So there's that. There are that you. There's about every time I look on there, uh, which is pretty regularly. There's about mm, I don't know, uh, fifteen, ten to fifteen books that are between the two hundred to four hundred dollar range, and not all of them are actually, um, you know, not all of them are actually. What am I getting at? Uh, books that are you know meant for um, a, you know. American accent people, you know, they might want British accents, they might want some sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, a kid or, you know, you know what I mean? You got to look and see what they want. And especially your filters, you might not have filled your filters out right. So I think that in itself can be uh, something you need to look at. But again, look at how much it's going to cost you. And if you're going to make money up front, you know, when I did a book uh, and the author is going to pay me uh, eighteen hundred and fifty dollars for, uh, you know, like eighteen. It was like seventy thousand or eighty thousand words. You know, I made a judgment call that was a lot better than offering royalty share. Okay, uh, and because this was his first book, it was well done. I really enjoyed reading the book. It was a fiction. I absolutely loved it. It was kind of like a mob type book, uh, young guy. So I fit me really well. Uh, but but that amount of money made a lot of sense for me. Do you know what I mean? It made a lot of sense for me to take that amount of money up front than me to do a royalty share. But I've also done a lot of royalty shares. So what I'm getting at here is please use, use your common sense, okay? And and when you're when you're doing these deals, but do them. Don't let them pass you by, especially if you're starting. I mean, look, anyone can say to you, hey, don't take that. It's not a lot of money or you're giving your, 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 you know, you're screwing yourself up or you're screwing the voiceover industry up, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Forget all of that. I promise you, I promise you from the bottom of my heart, if you take a book deal at $50 per finished hour, you are not going to screw my voiceover business over. <laughs> voiceover business over. Man, you're not going to screw me over. You won't. Okay? So do I, so these people who say that stuff, I, I don't know why they're so angry about it. Okay? I don't know. And, and, it, and it could be, too, that they feel that, you know, you, you might, you're, they're, they're, they're pushing their frustration upon you because they're unwilling to change about how the industry is now. Because the industry is not, it's not the same from the 80s or the 90s. The industry now is completely different. We live in a freelancer world where we deal with all over the world. We can deal with clients immediately over the internet. We no longer need agents. We no longer need all of that hoopla. Okay, so that means with direct access and affordable equipment, prices are going to change. The way you can get better with your pricing, though, is by continually growing as an actor 
and continually making your product better so that then you can charge more. But I always just say, just like the theater, you don't start adding another performance. And I've said this before, I know, but you don't start adding another performance until you're sold out. You don't need to start charging loads more until you start getting so busy that you need to charge more because you can't keep up, right? It's silly to raise your rates so high when you have no business. That just, that just seems silly to me, especially with the amount of business that's available at all tiers of our industry right now. Because there's a lot of business that's available on the top end and the low end and in the middle. And there's lots of business. We're very fortunate right now, I think, to be living through this time for voiceover. Uh, and I think it's just going to keep getting better, honestly. I mean, I, I keep watching these movie clips of these uh, uh, animations where there's real people and then there's animated figures who's starring in the movies and stuff. I just saw one of the Super Bowl, uh, you know, a Super Bowl ad. And I'm like, you know, that had to be a person who did a voiceover for that character. So, I mean, like, you know, imagine one day if all of, you know, they're doing entire, and they do already do entire videos, clearly animated videos. But I think there's going to be more and more. Because this person looks so real, this animation looks so real, it was next to real people, and you had to really do a double take to tell that it was an animation. I mean, it's just going to get better and better, and we are poised to be in that position to really take advantage of it. But getting back to ACX, please, 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 you make the right decision for you. You think clearly. Don't be afraid to talk to the author. Don't be afraid to talk to the rights holder. Do what you need to do. Offer something. Another really cool trick you can do is let's say you are doing that $80,000 or 80,000 word book and the author is doesn't want to pay you $250, okay? Or $200. You can always do a split, meaning that you can do and what's interesting is this is actually quoted on the global of uh, the um, the Global Voice Acting or Acting Academy or whatever it's called site for standard rates. For audiobooks, $100 per finish hour and royalty share. That's a really good deal for both you and the author. So let's take that 80,000 words, right? If they pay you $100 per finished hour, that's going to be like $900 or so, right? $900 you get off the top. So that's like limits you right away. You get $900. Then you're going to get seven years of royalty. So even if you only, even if you don't make anything, you have made $900, okay? And $900 is not too shabby, okay? It's not too shabby. If you make money, you've made $900 in cash, and now you have seven years to continue make, to continually make money on this book that you've done. So that's a really good deal, you know? And you can tailor that too. You could say $50 per finished hour plus royalty share, and what they will do is they will pay you up. They will pay you the money through PayPal, and then you offer the contract in the back end. And I, I I'm not sure. Um, you know, I've always done it where they pay me up front, and then we do the royalty share contract. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's what I've done. So you know, but I, you know, you can. You, I think there is a way for you to do it through ACX. But the thing is, is that there's so many different ways you can tailor this. So just think clearly. Don't be so uh, uh, willing at first to accept the first offer. Okay, don't, don't, you don't have to accept the first offer. I know for me, as soon as I saw it, when I first started, when I, I got those in, I was like, click, 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 just take, take it, take it, it's going to go away. <laughs> it's, like, it's going to leave me. I got to accept it. I don't care what it says. I'm going to accept it. All right, and that's fine. <laughs> Again, I'm glad that I accepted those books. But if I knew what I, but, and that's the whole thing. You can't go back and say if, because you didn't. And right now, if you're starting that point, you're starting at that point. You don't know either. And what I mean by that is, you just don't know what you don't know, and that's okay, because doing these jobs, getting these books on your resume, getting your name, I'm. I, I want to tell you all something. I have gotten business. I have received business from authors listening to my books on Amazon, finding me on Facebook. And then contacting me and saying they really liked how I narrated my books that they listened to and they wanted me to narrate their book. I've had publishers contact me that way as well. So, you know, the more you get yourself out there, the, the, you know, the better. I mean, I like uh, Bill DeWeese. Um, I've worked, I've taken some classes from Bill DeWeese. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, he says, you know, you're going to be a voiceover in the dark. You know, you're like a voiceover out there in the dark. 
a, a voiceover artist. You know, and, and meaning that, you know, you're, you're somebody, you're, if you're not getting yourself out there right now, you're just a voice. No one's finding you. So you got to get yourself out there. And sometimes to get yourself out there, you do what you got to do. Okay. And as my mentor, Earl Hall, always says, you know, you got to grind and don't quit. Grind and don't quit. And sometimes up front, you got to take those hits and keep going. And you know what's funny is the people who will put you down are the people who are not working. Nobody who is working their butt off is going to put you down for working your butt off. I promise you. The people who will put you down are the people who are not working. Because in their mind, they're going to blame you. Because they see that you're getting work. And they think, well, you're getting work. You're stealing all the work for us honest, hardworking people who are not working. (laughs) And you are. So, you know, don't let those people, you know, upset you. You do what you need to do. And I got your back. (laughs) I got your back. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I I hope this helped. And uh, listen, if if you you like what you hear and you want to hear more, please hit the subscribe button. Don't be afraid to hit the notification button as well because that's going to let you know when I post another video and I'm really trying to do this or podcast. Uh, Because tonight, oh, tonight I didn't tell everybody, but I'm actually streaming for uh, my podcast as well as YouTube. So I'm I'm trying to kind of combine what I'm doing and and make it a little more interactive with my audience. So, uh, you know, there'll be some links in both of these places for you to, uh, you know, either join 